and that's the most basic definition of it. If cancer is growing and it's uncontrolled, it's no longer regulated, then that makes the uh, uh, cells no longer behaving normal, and we call them cancer cells. And if they're more poorly differentiated, they're even more uh, mutated. So what are some of the things that can, the cancer cells can do to evade the normal regulation in, uh, in, in uh, their growth cycle? Well, they can uh, uh, be, become insensitive to the anti-growth signals. So there are signals that keep our cells growing in a certain way, keep our skin cells growing only on our skin and not spreading through our body. Uh, so there's anti-growth signals. There's also self-sufficiency in growth signaling. So the, the, the cells, uh, they produce cell, um, for their neighbors, so that like likes like, and they recognize each other, and like cells stay together. But uh, sometimes these uh, cancer cells start secreting uh, um, signals uh, that feed back on themselves and allow them to um, start behaving in abnormal ways. Then all cells have a set uh, duration. Uh, lifespan, the, the set time that they're supposed to live, and each cell line is it's different. Uh, some cells live for a few days, some for, uh, for years. Uh, and apoptosis is the natural cell death, and that natural cell death uh, is often evaded. In other words, the cancer cells turn off that natural programming and they uh, avoid dying and they live longer than they're supposed to, which is another hallmark of cancer. They also have the ability to uh, invade and spread through the body, and certain genes can uh, signal that a cancer has developed that ability. Uh, then they can also uh, have to recruit blood vessels when a seed lands to a new, when I say a seed, uh, uh, it's like a cancer can be like a seed when it spreads to the, another part of the body. It has to recruit blood vessels to feed that can new cancer cell, and that ability to recruit blood vessels is called angiogenesis. So we, there are genes that control and regulate angiogenesis. And there are treatments that target all of these things. Um, and then there's also limitless replicative potential, uh, something called the Hayflix limit. Each cell line has a set limit of uh, replications that it is allowed to do before it has to be replaced by a stem cell. And cancer cells seem to uh, go beyond. Very often they have the, the ability to go beyond this uh, replicated potential and that involves the hot topic of a telomerase which is also in the news uh, lately. So the testing that is done is uh, using standard testing kits and uh, tumor markers that are available just about any pathology lab in the world. The difference is, is that now we're using this technology to isolate circulating uh, tumor cells uh, very specifically and it's a, in a way it's a second confirmation of the original pathology of the cancer because we're using the same standard pathological tumor markers and sorting methods that are used by any lab um, and this is done through what we call negative selection and positive selection and most of the report that comes back looks very much similar to what most doctors are familiar with in terms of uh, how you isolate uh, uh, tumor cells using this uh, uh, metastatic gate uh, process and uh, as you've heard on the news recently um, circulating tumor cell testing has now been approved to use as a prognostic indication because it obviously if you've had surgery and that you're able to still detect circulating tumor cells in your blood well obviously they didn't get all of the cancer uh, after the surgery you know and, and it has a prognostic indication but this test offers that information but it offers much more because we then take the circulating tumor cells and do something very special with them uh, so there's this is just a list of the standard um, tumor markers that are used to isolate different types of cancers so you'll see the name of the cancer there and the standard uh, types of uh, uh, tumor markers that are available and they run all of these as a way to try and determine that indeed this is the the right diagnosis you know for the cancer and the origin of the cancer but then they can also take these cancer cells and do something uh, uh, that is checks for gene expression checks the genetics of the cancer itself and uh, there's different methods of doing that there's quantitative PCR cloning real-time PCR but the latest technology is something called microarrays which gives way more information than even PCR, which is also a very useful tool. But the microarrays uh, gives huge amounts of information and we can check multiple genes 
uh, at the same time. So here's what we're talking about when we're checking uh, genes. I'm not going to go over each one of these individually, but some of these you may recognize. Uh, the P53, about halfway down the page, uh, is, a, is a gene that is talked about a lot on the news because it's very common in a lot of cancers. The P53 gene is the gene that regulates cell death. So the apoptosis gene is, is what it's uh, commonly called. And often the P53 gene is downregulated or, or, or somehow mutated and suppressed or defective in about, is estimated about 60% of cancers. So it's worth trying to make a gene therapy target to correct the, the P53 gene defect when we detect it. Then you'll see a little bit down below the P53, you'll see VEGF and uh, FGF and PDGF, and they're all angiogenesis, and I mentioned angiogenesis earlier. Well, there, it's important to know these uh, because these genes are often upregulated, meaning that they're, um, they're being uh, uh, overexpressed over nor compared to normal cells. And that's another thing about this test is this, what do you use as a control? Well, we use an internal control. Your own healthy white blood cells uh, or non-cancer cells are used as a control. So when, we, when it says that it's 65% over control, for example, on the VEGF uh, gene, that means that this cancer cell is producing 65% more uh, VEGF uh, gene product than the healthy cells and thus it's recruiting more um, uh, blood vessels and it's one of the mechanisms and we have targeted therapies the hallmark uh, uh, one of the first ones on the market was a um, uh, uh, avastin avastin like the name implies uh, blocks the vascularization of the tumors and it works through this VEGF gene so all of these genes that are tested either have current targeted therapy that is available or in the pipeline and you see the list is quite extensive. And I can go over each of these genes in detail, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pause and you can have a couple second look uh, at your own time, uh, the different genes and what they do and how they're helpful. And the other thing that's helpful with a lot of these genes, in particular the COX-2 5 LOX pathway, is if that is a, a gene is, is involved in the cancer, we have off-label uses of medications, for example, uh, Celebrex and other uh, uh, COX-2 inhibitors and other natural substances that can inhibit the 5 LOX pathway like Boswellia uh, to, to help to uh, suppress that uh, activity of that gene. So there's off-label medication use as well as uh, standard uh, oncology uh, targeted therapies that target the, and take advantage of this information that we learn about the genetic makeup of the cancer. Pause on the multi-drug resistance uh, gene, the MDR, one because this is a, an important one to know because even though one gene may say that it's sensitive to this medication if the MDR gene is upregulated it imparts an ability for that cancer to uh, excrete or de defend itself against uh, a lot of the medications that would that we would normally be use on, on the cancer and if it's, uh, if the, so, so knowing the MDR, and there are off-label uses of medications that we can use to uh, downregulate the MDR gene and the other genes that are mentioned here. So it's important to know this information, and a lot of this off-label use, it's in the medical literature. Um, it's not widely used in, in standard treatment of cancer, uh, but what we're talking about here is advanced treatment, taking the knowledge that we have available in the literature and advancing it beyond what is standardly available in uh, most oncology treatment centers of the world. Uh, the gene also looks at, uh, I mean the gene test also looks at some other specific uh, uh, genes that we take advantage of here at the IAT like the heat shock protein um, and the uh, telomerase uh, enzyme uh, because there are treatments that are not available yet in the United States that uh, use these, uh, t uh, this information in heat shock protein uh, vaccinations to, uh, to treat the cancer. And this test tells us whether or not rationally those treatments should be effective or not. 